Hey everyone, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to achieve a clean, bright white commercial look, the kind you see in high-end ads. It's all about keeping things simple, sharp and polished. I'll be using DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools along with Dehancer Pro and Mononode's DCTLs, which are, as you may know, part of my regular workflow. So let's dive right in and create this professional minimalistic vibe. Alright, I've already got the footage we'll be grading imported into DaVinci Resolve. Before we create our timeline, let's take a quick look at the video specs and make sure our project timeline settings match perfectly. This step is crucial to ensure we are working with the right resolution, frame rate and color management for the best results. As you can see, the footage is 3840 by 2160. So let's adjust both the timeline and video resolution to match for a consistent 4K workflow. Here also let me quickly show you my color management settings to ensure everything is set up correctly before we start grading. Here I have set the color science to DaVinci YRGB because I prefer a CSD workflow. The timeline color space is set to DaVinci Intermediate and the output color space is Reg 709 Gamma 2.4 to match my display monitor which is calibrated for Gamma 2.4. Alright, now we can drop our footage into the timeline and head to the color page. As always, I'll start with my CSD nodes. Since this is RA Alexa Mini footage, we'll go from RA Log C3 to DaVinci Intermediate to work in a large color space for grading. I'm skipping tone mapping in the first CSD node uh, to keep the highlights and shadows uh, natural. For the output CSD, we'll go from DaVinci Intermediate to Reg 709 Gamma 2.4 uh, with tone mapping set to a maximum of 10,000 nits. All right. Now that the footage is in the correct color space, I'll add the Kodak 2383 print profile along with halation and bloom effects before starting to balance the image. I like to add these up front so they don't interfere with the balance later on. As always, I'll start by disabling the default settings in the enhancer, adjusting the color space and switching to high quality mode. Now I'll add the Kodak 2383 print profile. To give the image a head start, we can adjust the target white here slightly to cool it down. Looking good. Ok, for halation and bloom, I'll add them on a separate parallel note. This keeps the effects isolated, making it easier to tweak each one individually if needed. Here let's go with the custom settings and adjust its strength. Perfect. Now let's add two more notes at the top for primary grading. To balance the image, I'll use the temperature and tint sliders in the HDR panel. Here, a simple way to check if the whites are neutral and the colors are balanced is by using the vector scope. As you can see here, the image is leaning slightly warm, so we'll adjust the sliders to bring it closer to the center. Just like this. By the way, here I also want to show you an alternative and, in my opinion, a better tool by Mononotes. Let's add it to the end of our node tree. This tool has an amazing feature that highlights neutral colors in the image, making it much easier to balance. Look at that! See how the whites are getting perfectly neutralized? It's really amazing. Let's turn off the tool now and check the final result. Perfect, looking much more neutral. Next, let's check if the talent is properly exposed. To do this, we'll use the waveform. Here, make sure the display qualifier focus is enabled. Since this is a bright scene, I expect her skin to sit around 512 on the waveform. Let's check it. As you can see, it's a bit dark, so let's lift the exposure slider under the global wheel. There we go. That's looking much better now. Here, I also want to show you another tool in Dehancer Pro that I often use to double check for any clipping in the image. It's located under the monitor section. Let's turn it on. Alright, as you can see, some areas are clipping under the window, highlighted in red. 
To fix this, we'll go to the expand tool in the enhancer and enable it. Now, let's adjust the white point to eliminate the clipping. There we go. Now the whites are not clipping. While we are here, we can also tweak the black point slightly to add a bit more depth to the image. Looking great. By the way, if you are interested in Dehancer Pro, you can use the discount code MEDIAB10 for 10% off. You know, DaVinci Resolve's built-in tools are incredibly powerful and versatile, and we've used them throughout this tutorial and many others. However, Dehancer Pro takes things to another level. Its film emulation, halation, bloom, and other tools give you the ability to craft unique cinematic looks with ease. It's one of my go-to tools in my workflow, and I highly recommend checking it out. You can download the demo version if you want to give it a try. And I want you to know that on my YouTube channel, I only recommend tools that I personally use, so you can be confident that the Hanser Pro is something I trust and rely on in my projects. Now, back to the grading. Next, I'll add three more parallel notes for secondary color adjustments. Let's name them Hue, Density, and Saturation. For these adjustments, I'll use some DCTLs developed by Mononotes. Uh, let's add them now. In the Hue section, I want to fine-tune the skin tones. That's looking pretty good. To double-check it, I'll enable the skin tone indicator from Mononotes for an easy assessment. Perfect. As you can see, the skin is highlighted in yellow, which means it's staying perfect within the skin tone range. Alright, moving on to the density note. Here, I want to address the blue in the towel on the wall. Let's increase both the blue and cyan sliders. Much better. Next, in the saturation node, let's boost the saturation of the towel a bit. Yes, that looks great. While we are here, we can also slightly increase the skin saturation to give it a nice pop. Perfect. Now, let's take a step back and see how far we've come. Looking great. Okay, for the final step, I'll add three more parallel notes to apply my secret sauces. In the first note, we'll use the soften and sharpen tool. Let's lower its strength slightly. Good, that's looking nice. Next, we'll add the Contrast Pop tool. Here, I'll increase the detail amount while softening it a touch to keep it natural. Perfect. Lastly, let's add some glow. I'll lower the threshold a bit to give it that dreamy, polished finish. And there it is. We've taken this footage from its log state to a clean, bright and white commercial look with a professional finish. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.